Chapter 29, Applying Fertilizer The shattering of old armor, both personal and collective, is obviously our grist for the mill, the basic stuff of our spiritual learning. Once we know that, we then need to focus in upon our own particular way of being in daily life situations. For it's not only in meditation and in service to others that we learn the basic lessons of self-revelation. It's in the heat of the moment, as we deal with our intimates, talk with friends, deal with our jobs, and sit home alone. In all such situations, weaving the loom of personal life, we experience some sort of catalyst, some sort of sensory, emotional, and or mental process. These are our typical ways of thinking and feeling, intense or mild, pleasant or otherwise. This is the basic stuff of personality experience. When we then add a desire for spiritual growth, we have to expand our view from not only the stuff of experience, but also to how we relate to the stuff of experience. As I continued my counseling in the U.S. and abroad, I saw time and again the truth of this principle. What we think and feel is far less important than how we relate to what we think and feel. In other words, what we commonly call my shit, my crap, and my garbage is, in point of fact, if we're keen enough to see it, the major catalyst we can use to fertilize our growth of love wisdom. This idea first became clear after a counseling session I had with a European woman with whom I had had a friendship in Japan and who happened to be in San Francisco at that time. Despite her long background as a healer, she was still quite stuck in her own process concerning her marriage. She and her spouse still lived together, but they had not had intimacy for months. After a brief episode of infidelity on her part, the husband was still enraged. She had already acknowledged her responsibility and now wanted reconciliation, but she could not really confront the misery of her home life and the heavy grudge still nursed by her spouse. Actually, they were both stuck. After some back-and-forth talk in the session, a bolus of tears and sorrow welled up in her, and eyes red and bloodshot. She cursed her process. She said, I thought I'd finished all this crap years ago. I told her, if you had really finished it, then it wouldn't be coming up now. If you had really healed it, then you'd no longer be feeling it. In time, she agreed. And after the sessions, walking down the street, I saw the front page of our local weekly alternative paper running a story entitled Fecal Matters, no doubt an expose of local corruption or the newest sexual fad in our Babylon by the Bay of San Francisco. It was then that I put two and two together. Our old and crusted emotional issues are the very stuff of self-transformation, as they offer us head-on catalyst we can use to love ourselves more, accept ourselves more, and understand our process more than we already do. This so-called crap is the fertilizer of love wisdom if we know it, accept it, and understand its generation. Then move ahead to forgive the self and others. Seen in this light, it's damn good crap. It's worth far more than its weight in gold, because unlike gold, the inner growth from this fertilizer you can take with you. For this lady and her spouse, what healing demanded was a commitment to self-acceptance, a conscious, deliberate choice to feel, accept, and be willing to experience completely their pain, weakness, sorrow, guilt, and despair. This decision is no less than the decision to love, which, as always, begins with self-love. This simple act of decision, simple but not easy, would be the fastest and most direct way to open her heart chakra further, to generate more energy in the fourth or green ray center, and to accelerate a true and real reconciliation in the situation. What she considered her old crap is, in fact, if applied in the heart, rich, fertile fertilizer for developing love and compassion. Knowing this, the only question left is whether or not she really wanted to apply this fertilizer to her own process. After our work together and some more of her own self-reflection, she did, in fact, try to welcome her emotions a little bit more, and so she could then move on to wisdom, the fifth or Blu-ray center, throat chakra. We then looked at deeper dynamics. Why have you been unwilling to feel yourself? What is the state of your partnership, and what are your alternatives at this point? This type of inquiry requires more effort, 
And hey, no one ever said healing is easy. And more mental focus. We quickly plunged further. She didn't want to feel because she feared a complete nervous breakdown. She fought against weakness because since childhood, she always thought that she had to be strong. And she was afraid to feel her emotional void because she was avoiding the prospect of being alone again. Exploring all these issues, we peered into the beliefs which undergird her so-called negative emotions, as almost all feelings arise from beliefs. Clear your limiting beliefs, and you'll eventually clear the painful emotions. But of course, you must first be willing to feel them. As we looked from this angle, we saw the roots of her present paralysis, loving a man who hates her, and living in a tortured double bind. Her somewhat masochistic behavior keeping herself in the path of his rage, was actually a form of self-punishment, which fulfilled a confused desire for atonement for the act of marital infidelity. It was an example of the old mea culpa, I'm to blame, long-term guilt from chronic self-blame, which maintained her low self-esteem and was rooted in some very old self-doubt and negative self-valuing. These roots were complex, admittedly so. Thus we came to understand the how and the why of her present condition, as well as the mixed feelings of her spouse, who had been threatening separation for months, all the while hanging on to a pity-me role of victim-cum-torturer. Simply making the conscious direction of will needed to reflect more deeply and thus discover these facts is also a form of catalyst that fuels the growth of wisdom and discernment. She emerged from our sessions renewed. As we looked at her options, we decided that the best course would be to voice the insights she made, give the relationship a time frame, and consider the painful fact that the partnership was probably over. Having the will to face the music, as she had, is also a form of catalyst, consciously chosen for the growth of wisdom, which can be seen in the power of a few pointed questions. Wouldn't she be better off with a man who really loved her? Wouldn't self-healing proceed a little faster if she was not living with a tormentor? Wouldn't she improve her self-esteem and gain some needed emotional strength by taking the risk of being alone? Isn't loneliness preferable to being coupled in a caustic union? Confronting these answers takes guts, but it also leads to the further growth of will, six chakra activation, as well as some clearer thinking. If she had just followed her old way, hating the sadness, blaming herself for weakness, and avoiding the massive sorrow overhanging her self-punishing home, she would not have been able to take the next step in the process. What she first called my old shit was really a precious resource. But again, she had to open the eyes of self-acceptance, or love, to see it that way. Once accepted in the heart, she could then move on to the mind and seek deeper comprehension, or wisdom. Situations like this are all around us. Whenever we feel conflict, there is an opportunity to realize greater self-healing through the growth of love-wisdom. Are you angry at the faults of those around you? Disgusted by the greed of your ex-husband? Fearful of the death of those you love? Regretting your past mistakes? Or fearful of striking out on your own? If so, then freedom will come only by making peace with these feelings. Accept yourself and the limitations of each situation. Try to acknowledge the responsibility of all concerned without blaming anyone. Then consider how and why it all came to be. A simple motto, fully conscious feeling leads to total permanent healing. Each conflict we face in daily life can be used this way, but only if we're willing to apply the fertilizer, not to keep on cursing it.